Don't fade out on me, Dad. I'll be home soon. I hope. Shooting, madam. We were wondering if you could tell us. I don't talk to hooligans! On a very friendly sort. That, that was Edna. Edna Strickland? Impossible. This is how she was when I first met her. I had to. Listen, just leave it to me. Okay, we think you know how to handle her. Just remember, we need to know what happened to Hill Valley, and just as importantly, the precise time when it happened. I hate to see it like this. Mary Pickford. Now where would she pick up a fake name like that? A blacksmith sign. I wonder if it's from Doc's old shop. I wonder what's cooking. I guess this isn't the right time to be burning things. Ouch! I'm guessing this mop doesn't get much use. Yeah, I can wait. It looks like Doc's old sign, but... I guess it couldn't be. The top of a mop. I could flop it on a cop. I could swap it for a top. I can... I think I'll stop. Doc! It's a... District. Who are you? Harry Callahan. That's a foolish name. And I make it a rule not to talk to strangers with foolish names. But we're not strangers. How do I know you? You interviewed me once, back when you were young. Listen, Sonny. I'm an easygoing woman, but I got a few rules I live by. And rule number one is, I never, ever talk about the past! Or the future, neither. I don't talk about any day but today. I guess that didn't go so well. Of course she doesn't talk about the past, because there's something in her past she's trying to forget. But we're gonna pry it out of her. Go ahead, knock on the door again. It's me again, your old friend. How do I know you? We spent the day together. We did? Where? At the expo. That's crazy. I've been here all... What day is it? Tuesday, October 13th, 1931. October 13th, 1931. October 13th. 
something funny about that date. Well, what are you here for? I brought something for you. What is it? Let me see. I brought you him. Him? Who oh, him? Him who? This is Doc Brown, the guy who built the car you stole. Stole? I never steal. I'm a law-abiding citizen. Still, there is something familiar about those features. Sure, I don't know you from somewhere. Look hard. Don't tell me you don't recognize your own boyfriend. My boyfriend? Yeah, he's, um, he's all grown up. Come closer, fella. Marty, what am I supposed to do? Trust me, Doc. Just go with it. Emmett! Yes, Edna. It's me. It is! It's October 13th, 1931! Oh, and you are Emmett! Emmett! Oh, how did I get so turned around? Have I been dreaming? Or well, stay there! It's a classic case of repressed memory syndrome. Once the mental dam is broken, the subject is immediately plunged into the midst of the very scenes she's trying to forget. Darling, you've come back. Of course I knew you would. An intelligent boy like you wouldn't be one to throw away true love all because of a silly quarrel. I've already forgotten about last night's little tiff. I trust you've done the same? Of course I have. Of course I have. What? Oh. Schnookums. Oh, you're sweet. But you're still keeping company with this Smirnoff character. I insist you drop him. He's a bad influence. And you've got to stop working on that dangerous electrokinetic... What's this? Um... Okay. I suppose now you're miffed with me for forcing Detective Parker to close your booth down. Bitter medicine for you, I know, but I had to do it. And Parker had no choice but to obey my orders. He knows that my opinion carries a lot of weight in Hill Valley, and he'd never... Parker would never... Oh! What is it? I don't know. Something about Detective Parker. Something that happened to me on October 13th. What could it be? Can you jog her memory? If we can keep her mind in the past, we may get the full story of Hill Valley's premature destruction. Don't interrupt the trance.
don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. No! Turn it off, you imbecile! If Parker hears that, he'll... Officer, I can explain. It was a trick. I was framed. Oh, he's after me! Ha! He'll never catch me in this souped-up car of the future! Curses! I can't shake him! Well, no use in holding back now. Let's see what this baby can do. And... Here it comes! Yes? Here what comes? I, uh, I, I don't know. Something really unexpected is supposed to happen right about now, but I'm not sure what. Oh, come to think of it, how can I be expecting something unexpected? Uh, oh, what's going on? Quick, Marty. We've got to find a way to push the story along before she snaps out of her reverie. I'm being transported! Where? Back! Back! To the past! What do you see? Hill Valley! But it's all different! It's so small and primitive! Heavens! Can it be? It is! Is what? Grandfather! Big as life! Marshal Jade Strickland came to Hill Valley in 1869, shot by- I know, Doc. We met him in 1885, remember? No! I must be mistaken. Grandfather didn't look like that. That man is an imposter! I'm not even sure it is a man! This is all very confusing. Where am I? Why am I thinking about the past? Get off my lawn, you kids! Better find a way to bring back Marshal Strickland quick. We've got to bring this story to a climax. It looks a bit like Grandfather now, but he would never have walked around bareheaded. This hat doesn't frame her face very well. Edna's hat. I think her fashion sense has gone by the wayside. Not bad. Oh, Grandfather. How well you look. How well everything looks. How does everything look? Tell me. It's a bit rustic, to be sure, but all the buildings are so sturdy and well-kept, and the young people of Hill Valley, they're so virtuous and upright. So unlike the degenerate specimens from the 20th century, and I know the reason why. Why? They haven't yet fallen prey to the vices of booze and debauchery. They are still in a state of innocence. I think I could learn to like living here. <gasps> but who's this? Who? This big lout swaggering up the street. Lips curled in an insolent sneer. He's a newcomer to Hill Valley. Uh, Beauregard. Beauregard... Tannen. Yes! Good guess. Look at Acting like a big shot, throwing his money around. Stolen money, no doubt. Why can't they see through him? The two-bit phony! And now his plan becomes clear. He's bought a plot of land in town. He's going to put up a... A... A what? I don't know. It's something I don't like. Something... <laughs> evil. This is the key to our mystery. We've got to get her memory back in the groove.
Here's something that'll make you remember. Remember what? I don't like to remember. Who are you? What are you doing in my yard, you hooligan? No, Edna. No yard. What? This is Emmett speaking. It's October 13th, 1931. Yes. And something's about to happen. Oh yes, something big. But what? Better not talk to her directly. It'll break the spell. Nah. I don't think so. Maybe not. An old saloon sign. Cool. Too bad it's all burnt. It's an old saloon sign. Looks like it's been through a few bar fights. Not sure what that'll do. Not sure what that'll do. Talk about a watering hole. A saloon? In Hill Valley? Oh, he can't do that! Grandpa, you can't let him do it! You can't let that snake ruin paradise! Well, if they're all too blind to stop him, I'll just have to take the law into my own hands. I'll make sure this sinful establishment never opens its doors. I'll... I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. Something very... conclusive. it all wrong. It'll never burn like that. First, we'll need some kerosene. Apply it liberally to the building site. No sense in being parsimonious. And now, watch. Isn't it beautiful? The devil's Andy were consumed by the fires of righteousness! <laughs> burn, you sucker! Burn! She was never this passionate when we were dating. Uh oh. What is it, Edna? Is it the fire? Turn away! Don't look! It's not staying in the saloon, is it? It's spreading to the other buildings in Hill Valley. My intentions were pure. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. But it did happen like this. And you've been repressing it all these years because you can't stand to admit that you're... A hooligan. I'm a hooligan. <laughs> Will I lay it on too thick? Here's the story. Black and white and red all over. Huh. Hill Valley destroyed my fire. Started approximately 2 a.m. July 17th, 1876. Of course, I'm not the real criminal in this story. Am I, Mr. Sagan? You set me up for a fall. You and Schmernoff. You made me steal your infernal car. You made me burn down Hill Valley. And now, by the powers invested in me by the town of Hill Valley, I hereby sentence you two criminals to... Hey. You! How much have you heard? Enough for a month's worth of headlines in a Hayesville Herald. Two months worth if you shoot those fellas. I could shoot you too, you know. But you won't, because that would be against the law. And you never break the law, right? This is your cue to skedaddle. Right. Much obliged.
There's Beauregard Tannen's half-finished saloon. Sometime during the next hour, Edna's going to light it on fire and accidentally burn down Hill Valley. I wonder where her DeLorean is. We'll find it later. Right now, we've got to stop that fire. I'll go around back. You go through the front. Got it. I think I liked it better on the outhouse door. Better not get too close. No, stop. It's just me. Mr. Sagan, what are you doing here? I was gonna ask you the same question, Miss Pickford. Isn't it obvious? I'm putting an end to your den of iniquity before it starts. I don't think so, Mary. I don't like shooting women, but no one comes between Beauregard B. Tannen and his livelihood. Tannen, stop! If you shoot her, she'll drop the torch, and this whole place will burn up. Edna, stop! If you drop that torch, he'll shoot us! Looks like we're at something of a standoff here, Mr. Tannen. I don't see a way out, unless somebody manages to disarm both of you at the same time. How the hell am I supposed to do that? The chandelier's right over their heads. That's gotta be useful somehow. Dolores Miskin? Dolores Miskin? Pickle juice. That ought to be handy for putting out torches. It's too heavy to lift. Man, this thing is not light. Maybe we can come to a more peaceable solution. Chandelier's right over their heads. That's gotta be useful somehow. It's right over his head, but I can't knock him out while Edna's still holding that torch. Not quite. Man, this thing is not light. Why are you so hellfire determined to meddle in my affairs, woman? You've been a burr in my behind for over a month now. You're the source of the help? I wonder what's in these. Oh, stop quiet! God. What the hell? Oh, cow crap! There goes all my pickled pig's feet! 
Pickle juice. That ought to be handy for putting out torches. It's too heavy to lift. Going down. Looks like your torch is getting a little dim there, Miss Pickford. It's still hot enough to bring down this little bit of Gamora, Tannen. <sighs> All right, physics. Say, that's a lovely. I can't reach it, and even if I could knock it down, Edna'd be free to torch the place. Sandbags right over Tannen's head. If I don't figure out some way of dousing that flame, Edna's gonna burn down the town. Mary Pickford? Don't tell me that you're not traveling through time under a pseudonym, Mr. Carl Sagan. Quit yammering, you two! Nothing worse than a chatty standoff. Dressed like that. I wasn't planning on visiting the 19th century today. And I wasn't planning on shooting a couple of lunatics today. Guess life's full of surprises, ain't it? Was that a mouse? What's the matter, Miss Pickford? Scared of a little mouse? No, but you should be scared. Mice carry diseases. It's a fact. Look it up. Are you here to haul me back to 1931 for my supposed crimes? Or is there some sort of time court for that kind of thing? Time court? <laughs> what was that noise? What noise? I didn't hear a noise. Okay, that was lucky. Won't be long now. We'll just see. The ammo's in place. Now to pull the trigger. Say, that's a lovely chandelier. 